Today, we're going to transform this base into a full-blown scenic masterpiece. Probably. Hi guys. I actually forgot to put the base of the riverbed down before priming in black last week. So the first thing to do is quickly lay down some various stones and ballast. If you want to see this technique in more detail, check out my video for the Cora stream bed. The riverbed is now sprayed with water, as this helps the glue seep through the stones and give an even coat. I'm using Ballast Bond to set the stones in place, and whilst this is a commercial product by Deluxe Materials, you can produce your own mix with a couple of basic materials. Now that the glue has dried, the river is airbrushed black to match the rest of the diorama. The bridge abutments have been sprayed with a colour by Vallejo called IDF Sand Grey, and single blocks are picked out in light brown. The blockwork is then given a black wash to tone down the colouring and add some weathering. I've masked the abutments off and now the riverbed can get a nice bit of colour. I've chosen to start with an emerald green down the centre, and this will add depth to the riverbed as the colour will gradually fade down towards the middle. Then the diorama gets a coat of earth brown. Spraying from above means that the paint isn't quite hit under the black below the stones, and this gives it a nice easy shadow effect, added some depth and interest to the riverbed. The rockwork also gets sprayed with earth brown, however, this gets further attention, mostly dry brush and light antique white down from above, which starts to highlight the detail. This effect is carried on to the large stones on and around the riverbed. Using it here adds a good contrast to the shadows below, giving a real 3D look to the rocks. The rockwork is also given a slight tonal change with thin down brown. This is subtle, but does give a realistic variation to the colouring. Remembering that stone doesn't usually come in just a uniform colour. With the riverbed colouring finished, the bridge can now be glued on. I start with the deck, and use super glue on the abutments. The sides are now added. These have a bead of glue running down the entire length of them to bond to the deck. The second side is added in the same way, making sure that it's sitting vertical. There is a little time window to correct this before the glue sets hard. Moving on to the track bed. And as it's only a short run of track on this diorama, I thought I'd space the sleepers for a more narrow gauge feel. So a batch of sleepers are cut free from the webbing, and then threaded back onto the rails. I needed to lift the track level a few millimetres to match the bridge height, so I've glued the track onto strips of plastic card. The advantage of the plastic card is that I can easily space and glue down the sleepers. The track work has been sprayed with earth brown, weathered with light antique white, and rust applied to the rails. Copy Dex is applied to the diorama, so the whole piece can be glued down and left to dry. Ballast is now added to the track bed. The story in the book tells of how Rusty the Diesel has worked wonders with these rails. So I'm going with a freshly laid track look. A soft dry brush is used to manipulate the ballast around the sleepers. And like the riverbed, the ballast is sprayed with water before ballast bond added. Before adding the ballast bond. When this is dry, the attention turns to the fields. 
A thick coat of PVA is applied to the base. I use this neat and almost try to dry brush with the glue towards the edges of the field to get a gradual fade from the grass. You can see that with stippling on the bank here. A few grass tufts have been added to the riverside. Static grass is then applied over the whole glued area. The static grass applicator is really versatile and the fibres will reach and stick to any glue you have applied. Meaning that you can get it onto the sides of a bank such as the rear of this diorama. The benefit of the diorama being so small is that I can just turn it upside down and tap the loose fibres off, which can then be used again. A single layer of grass always looks a bit artificial, so I add a second, thinner layer of slightly longer fibres. To do this layer, the track is masked off and spray glue is used over the first layer. You can get quite localised with the spray glue, which also helps with the natural look of the grass. You can see the difference as the second layer is starting to go on. You can also see how quick I go over the diorama with the applicator. That's because I don't want a thick coat of fibres here. Whilst the track is masked off, I also alter the colouring of the grass fibres. For this I airbrush a few different colours on, starting with Humbrol 105, which is a really deep lush green. I then lightly spray the tips with an off-white creamy colour to represent the longer dead grass. Moving on to the scenery and I've gone with two different sizes of scenic foam. I use the slightly larger one for the main plants and then blend them in with the smaller size. This just sticks down onto spray glue. The foam is not the finished look but more of the body with which I build up to use the knock leave material. Like on Chorus this has two different shades, with the darker going on first and then the brighter green going on top. I also sprinkle these leaves over the field area to blend it in, which gives a more wild, unkept look. Larger bushes are built up with polyfiber by Woodland Scenics. Spraying this with spray glue and treating it the same as the previous foliage. There's no real correct way to do this, so just keep adding leaves until you're happy with the look. So looking at the illustration in the book, the diorama is going to need a few trees. And I've chosen to go with sea moss for the main structure. Holes are pushed into the base of the diorama and the completed trees will be glued into these. To add detail to the tree, the sea moss is first sprayed dark brown and finally given the same leaf treatment as the bushes. Poking the sea moss through a piece of kitchen roll prevents your hands getting gluey and the spray glue is actually a real pain to get off. A drop of PVA on the tip of the sea moss is enough to fix it in the pre-drilled hole in the base. The scenics are done so it's time to pour the river water. This is a two-part resin water by WWS Scenics. And dams are needed on the ends of the riverbed to prevent the water from running out. Pouring the resin is really satisfying and a little bit scary, but it's great to see the change to the riverbed when the water starts building up. Though this resin gives a really good glass-like finish, it doesn't exactly scream fast-flowing river. So Mod Podge is applied on top. If you apply this in thin enough coats, it dries crystal clear in a matter of hours. I'm just going to do two coats on this river.
And whilst I wait for the second coat to dry, I'm going to have a go at painting the background. I'm not a 2D painter, and I'm pretty sure this is the first time I've painted anything since school. So let's see how I get on. Right, okay, well it's not perfect, but you get the picture. This was also built into a box-like frame to fit round the diorama. The sides are painted black to force the viewer to look through the diorama to the rear. I also bought some cheap LED tape to light it up. This is stuck at the top of the front and the left hand side of the box, and small wires are soldered to join them together. The battery packs are now glued to the side of the box. I've used two different temperatures of white for the lights, so I can vary the lighting on the scene. The final job was to paint a bit of white water onto the river, and that scene. I'm really happy with this scene so far, and whilst this week has seen a big transformation, there's still figures and rolling stock to make. So if you'd like to see these techniques in better detail, check out these videos on the chorus layout. Cheers.